All right, what up, everybody? Welcome to yet another episode of These Corona Times. You are, of course, tuned in with your girl Tiffany and Dr. Simone and Mr. Brandon. Hey. Yo, what's, what's up, up folks? <laughs> <laughs> We're in a good mood today. We are just super jovial. Uh, yes, we all have on red shirts. And it was an accident. <laughs> <laughs> it's been it's been very eventful already. Y'all have no idea. Yes. We've already yeah, had a yeah. lot happen behind the scenes. Yes, we got a great show lined up for you um, today. Our topic is generational perspectives in these Corona times. So we've got not just one, not just two, but four special guests for you. And of course, we'll get into that a little bit later today. But before we do, we always want to say thank you. Uh, We definitely appreciate the love and support you guys are really taking to our Facebook channel. Uh, So thank you all Mm -hmm. for following. Thank you all for sharing. Thank you all for joining in the watch parties and commenting. We hope you all enjoyed last week's episode about back to school in these Corona times. And, you know, again, just continue to like and share and comment. Yeah. Thank you. Thank (laughs) you. Thank you. Thank you. This was this. We didn't have any expectations for this. And. It, whatever we had has it, been exceeded. <laughs> mm-hmm. Absolutely, yep. for sure. Okay. Exactly. Very much so. Yeah. Just something that came up out of the Marco Polos, and here we are. Mm-hmm. What is this, episode 12? Episode We're on episode 12. 12. Can you believe that? Wow. Yes. <laughs> so we, we're no. three months in right now. I cannot. Yeah, yeah. We're three months in. We started yeah. back in May and still going strong. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. And have much more so, things to talk about too. So we got other stuff on the horizon for the rest of this month. Mm-hmm. And again, as long as Rona will have us, we will be here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. This is this might be bigger than Rona. We talking about shoot off, off shoots or whatever off you shoots. call it, spin off, yeah. spin off, yeah, spin off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Keep watching. So how for have that. y'all been doing? <laughs> we yes. Yeah. So we definitely want to. Uh, touch base and see how we've been doing. You all have been doing with self care. Um, I definitely don't remember what y'all said last week. So whoever wants to go first, I remember. I no, me. I, I actually it. remember mine as well. I was oh. supposed to. Get, I was supposed to uh, get up with Sean uh, this week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that didn't. That didn't. That didn't work out. Um, wow. Yeah, my wife. For, for those that don't know, my wife started a new job uh, mm-hmm. this past Monday. Okay. She's a. Uh, She's a new, she's now a, a new principal. And so, hey. yeah, shout out to my wife for that, uh, big time. But uh, that, that meant there was more stuff going on around the house. And so, you know, when it came time to get down for Friday, it was just, I was done. Tiff, Tiff knows I'm up, I'm, I'm trying to go to bed at decent hour anyway, but I was in bed early this weekend. Early. Like, <laughs> he really does. We don't it understand. Was, it was really, it was a long, long week um so yeah so yeah I, I did not i did not practice really good self-care uh mm-hmm. this week <laughs> well we and that time we still got time yep so that's tomorrow yep and no fault of your own on that one really because we were trying to have a social distance dinner date on thursday with all of us and the rain would not let us be great so would not allow yeah so that was my goal too was to have um more time with my friends since she's just down the street from me for another few more days. But while we didn't get to get together in person, we did have some more Netflix party. Uh, we're watching. Uh, yes, we did. We're watching a great reality show on Netflix right now, Indian Matchmaker. <laughs> <laughs> we got like two more episodes, so I'm, we're going to try to finish it before Simone heads back. Yes, we got to do that for sure. Tiff, how did you do on your self care? What was that? Your- was my self care. Oh. It was. A it was. What was it? Was oh, it was. You. It was. I missed that. I totally missed that. <laughs> I feel like we did. We we had not done a Netflix party back when I was in Charlotte, so that counts. It counts. Yeah, I think it counts. For sure. Mhm. Exactly. Exactly. Um. Yeah. And my self care was to just be on vacation and to continue that. So, um, you all already know, Caden's been with his other grandmother and grandfather for like six days mm-hmm. total, and he's there tonight. So, yeah, we've been doing what we need to do, mm-hmm. self wise. Mm-hmm. You look a little more refreshed, Simone. I know. I, I am. I, I feel good. <laughs> when we get back home, when we, the minute we get back home, all that, all that weight and like <laughs> stress is going to yeah. be right back. <laughs> <laughs> So, Brandon, how 
Brandon. You want to let us know what the episode? I let folks know what the episode is going to be about. Would you like yes. to orient us to the episode? <laughs> orient. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, this week we're going to talk about generational perspectives and so we you generally hear from us we are all the same age i'm 35 both simone and tiff are 36 so you all hear from uh, no. 36 yet. oh i'm sorry you're not 36 yet. My fault. My fault. 35. My fault. you're about to be 36 Roll my bad in like roll six it, weeks roll it, got like roll six it back roll just a little bit roll it back <laughs> and so you tend to hear a perspective from individuals who are fairly like-minded and are uh, you know the same age. And so this week we wanted to get some people with a different perspective. So we've got a couple of folks that are younger than us and a couple of folks that are older than us just to kind of talk about what this time period means to them with the protest, with uh, so the social justice movement, when it comes to Black Lives Matter, when it comes to how the different generations even approach each other. We thought it was important to kind of bring those together uh, because it seems in some cases where there's, there's a little bit of a, I don't want to say a breakdown, but a little bit of a difference in how multiple generations are, are, are taking to this time. So uh, having, what do we, what do we have, what, four guests? Yes. Is it four? Yeah, four mm -hmm. guests coming on to kind of a, uh, lend their uh, lend their backgrounds and their expertise to this so hopefully you all will enjoy different perspectives uh this go around yeah and we don't know what's gonna happen we don't know, we don't know. some of them are wild cards and so you don't. just bear with us <laughs> you don't know you don't know <laughs> You know, we are really excited about this episode because you know, thankfully um, it's good to have friends who are willing to come on your show yes. and talk with you and share their perspectives with you. And this is for us all about just trying to see this through another lens. As Brandon said, you hear from us a lot. We're about the same age. We have some of the same experiences. But in this case, I think it's great to get other folks uh, point of view. We're going to be doing a little bit more of that this month as we branch out and have um, some other guests on later in the month of August. But just trying to get what all this looks like or feels like from another person's um, from another person's lens. So we were excited in the green room leading up to this. So we hope y'all will enjoy it as well. And what we're going to do is take a little break and bring in our guests and then someone will introduce them. Awesome. All right, everybody, welcome back. And as you can see, our boxes usually jump from uh, three to four, but they've jumped from like three to seven. So we have some very special guests on with us tonight. So I'm going to let uh, Simone introduce those. Yes, so excited to have all of you. So we have, and it just wave, wave your hand, Stefan, who is 28, correct? correct? We have Cheyenne, who is 20, ooh, girl, what'd you say? How old are you? 20-something. 20 20. 22. 22. We have Rob, who is 54. And then we have Rodney, who is also 54. Is that correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, so like we said, this is all about a, a generational discussion. So we are so thankful to have you all here to participate. So thank you all. Thank you. We really do appreciate you all taking your time uh, that you could be spending with family members and doing what and I get ready for the week to spend some time with us. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're very happy to have you all. And we know uh, some of y'all 50 plus, so we ain't going to stay here too long so y'all can go to bed early. See? There you go. There you go. I must be. I must be in my fifties because that's exactly what I'm gonna do. That's true. That's true. One o'clock in the morning. Good hours. Those are good hours. So before we get started, uh, we always like to start with the general, like baseline question. How's everybody doing? You all can just jump in as you need to. But I guess we'll start first with uh, Cheyenne, as the young lady on the panel. How are you doing? Just with everything that's going on, COVID-related, protest-related, everything. Oh, I'm doing well. I think like anybody, I've kind of moved to that stage of like, okay, like how long is this really going to be? Like, you know, what is this going to look like around the holiday season even? Like, I don't think anyone when lockdown started was thinking about, you know, a quarantine Thanksgiving and things of that nature. Man. So, um, you know, kind of anticipating the future, but just focusing on ways to help now, um, signing petitions whenever I see them and, you know, working on self-development, of course, praying stuff is getting crazy yeah mm -hmm. Stop, yes. Stefan, how are you doing i am doing fine um 
I find myself sometimes having to unplug a little bit from when, like, scrolling social media and watching the news and things. Um, it just gets to be too much sometimes. It's heavy on your spirit. And, like, the last few weeks, I've kind of just been – I post a little bit. I've been to a couple protests, but I've been kind of taking more time for myself to make sure that, like, I'm okay and I'm not mm-hmm. – taking on too much and, and being um, not as effective as I could be. I think that's important mm-hmm. as well. Everybody wants to be a part of this revolution and the movement, but you have to realize that you have to take care of yourself at the same time. So that's kind of yep. where I am currently. Yeah. Very true. Yep. Mm-hmm. Rodney, what about you? Uh, a lot of people get claustrophobic, um, honestly, and, and, and needing to go out. And I, I fully understand that because a lot of times again, being a home, as great as that sounds for a lot of people, that's not great for people who need to see people and being around people. So all that being said, for me, uh, I'm, I'm doing great. You know, in the school year, I was able to be home with my kids and, and um, uh, not home school, but they were schooling from home. And uh, we were all home. My wife was downstairs in the office. And this, this to me, has been just great because um, – I don't mind the not having to run around. We've done that. And, it, mm-hmm. and it's cool for me. I am totally okay with being at the house. Good to get out and do stuff. Yes. But I don't have to do anything. Oh. So I'm, I'm just as fine being at the house. So, so that, that's, I, I'm great. <laughs> I'm living my best life. <laughs> <laughs> you saved the best for last. I'm not, oh, right, right, right. <laughs> I do get a little golf in it though. I get even once a week I get some golf in, but that's a whole other stuff. Well Rob, uh, how about you? I uh, just been um taking it easy. I've been lucky enough I get to work from home. Uh the first month I was getting a little stare crazy. Uh but after that I just went back to my military training and this this De- deal with it, you know, this deal of it. You no, know, I got to take care of the family. So I'm the only one that goes out, you know, shopping or anything. And uh, I just make sure the house is together. My wife, she has projects and she's spending all my money. <laughs> I don't believe that. I don't I believe that at all. She's painted two rooms. She's purchased two beds. Uh, her birthday was in May. She said she wanted six things because she turned 60. So she got money. She got clothes. Uh, she, she got a brand new 4K TV, which Shit. I don't even have. Uh, my birthday too. Right? My birthday coming up. And then the, the craziest thing she wanted was she wanted an Xbox. Wow. Yeah, she's been gaming. So, well, all right. Okay. So she's been gaming. She's been gaming. And my son, uh, mm-hmm. the best thing out of this is my son became a, a junior manager and partner owner in the Sonic Corporation. So he yeah. listened to daddy and he's making some bank now. So he's, paying, he's finally paying that phone bill. <laughs> oh, Lord. Well, congratulations to you. <laughs> so I really appreciate all of y'all sharing how you've been doing. I definitely heard... Um, some similarities, but also some differences. So I think um, for me and the three, uh, me, Tiffany, and Brandon have been sharing about how we've been kind of struggling with seeing how things are going um, mm-hmm. as it relates to racial injustice and, and protests and all that kind of thing. And so I wonder, um, I guess I wonder about you all thoughts about how things are going in that respect with the protests, with the um, police brutality and those kind of conversations, what your perspectives are on that and, you know, what needs to change or how you feel we're doing in that way. Yeah, so maybe we could start here. Um, how many of y'all have actually gone out to engage in any protests thus far? And whether that be physical or social or um, otherwise like a financial blackout day, um, have you participated in all of the movement? For sure. I saw uh, hands, go yeah. yeah, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've been to, to quite a few protests, um, signed petitions, donated, um, just spread the news as much as I can. It's definitely a weird dynamic, you see. At first, it was kind of the cool thing to do. So, like, mm-hmm. everybody was on board, and everybody mm-hmm. was posting, and everybody was protesting. And now you're kind of seeing it come back down a little bit, and like only the more serious folks are still 
protesting mm-hmm. and posting and things, and it's not as popular to keep doing it. People are kind of going back to life as usual. NBA is back, so it's kind of mm-hmm. you kind of really see where where people's minds are and, and how much it actually matters to them now. Mm-hmm. It's a different dynamic, but like I said, it, it's a good thing. Um, the last protest I went to, just to kind of comment on, there were a lot of white people there and not a lot of black people, and it was. Mm-hmm. It's a good thing to see them on board, but I mean, this is for our lives to matter, and it's like, where are we at? It's, mm. it's, a, weird, it's a weird thing. But um, like I said, it's good to have them on board because it's definitely moving the cause forward. But I just would like to see more of us continue and not kind of lose steam so quickly. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's funny you mentioned the um, um, our, our like, white people, I guess, getting involved. Because through all of this, from George Floyd, George Floyd moving forward, the real difference I've seen, obviously the, the world um, response and, and just the overall response, but the real difference I've seen is that white people are, 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 are involved as well. They're no longer sitting on the sidelines saying, well, that doesn't impact me. And, and to, honestly, that, that's, that's the real difference. We've seen the dude with, with being, being held on the ground. We've seen that stuff. And what's interesting, as shocking as it was that you see George Floyd, we can name seven, seven race situations just, just like that. Just like mm-hmm. that. You know, so I mean yeah. that, that was not news for us. What was surprising again for me, and I guess pleasantly and very appreciative, surprisingly, to see a lot of white people out there just speaking up. And I, I really think that's the difference I've really seen from, from, from everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, one of the things I've done, I've talked to my two uh, remaining aunt and uncles, and they're both in their late 80s, and born in Mississippi, Jim Crow. And um, and I talked to them about it, and they just said, it's just sad that they're 80 plus, about to be in their 90s, and the same thing is still going on. Mm-hmm. And, and they're just so sad about it. You know, they're, they're just tired of it. You know, um, one thing I've learned, I, I just started to do, um, I bought, I just started buying shirts, masks, anything that's, you know, black power. Uh, mm-hmm. I wear them in the streets. I don't care if people look at me crazy because they need to know. We're, we're tired of this, you know. Mm-hmm. This has been going on too long. And like Will Smith said, it's been going on for a while. The problem is now it's getting videotaped. Camera oh. phones. Yeah. yeah we it's can getting see videotaped. It, yeah. We can yeah. see. And... I mm-hmm. remember being in, uh, I was in uh, South Korea on the DMZ when Rodney King got beat. And we were like, man, ain't nobody got beat like that. And they showed us the tape and you used to see the black soldiers go, mm-hmm. man, how, how could they do that? And then they got mm-hmm. off. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. you know, like mm-hmm. I said, my aunt and uncle, they just can't believe the same stuff is still going on and they're going to mm-hmm. be 90 uh 89 and 88 this year and they're tired mm-hmm. of it mm-hmm. and i think that's a, a really good point because that's one of the things we're thinking about is the fact that some people are kind of reliving this and some of us are living in, th- in this for the first time like these are times that we read about that we never thought like we read about in the history books and heard about from our folks but we never really lived lived it and um, y'all are talking about white folks, and so while white people really are, many of them are stepping up, you still have this white supremacy that, I mean, pervades everything that we do. And it's really tough sometimes, not sometimes, it's tough to hear when black people are, you know, trying to just speak up for ourselves and have equality, how, um, you know, there, it's not protest, it's riot, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's it really interesting to hear how we are, you know, the names change. You know, when you, when you had people, white people protesting about mask wearing, you was like, oh, look at the protesters. Um, but when it's us saying Black Lives Matter, so look at those violent rioters. And so it's tough to have your white allies when you also know that there's this culture of white supremacy that is trying to dictate how we fight for Black Lives. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. It's like, it is funny because the hypocrisy is, it's like right in front of you. Like it's, it's, and they don't have a, they don't even have anything for it because you say, well, what about so and so? Oh, they were just, they're just protesting. They want to reopen the economy, but those rioters over there, they're just <laughs> white yeah. folks don't make news. They don't sell tickets. 
Black Death does. Mm. That's what excites people to watch on TV. Mm. How many times you hear, oh, there's a shooting downtown somewhere. And the first thing to come to your mind, what area was it in? And then you start thinking, Ooh, white guy, black guy. Jeez. If it was a white guy, eh, no worries. If it was a black person, oh, we need to mm-hmm. see that. Because that's, but that's isn't, excitement. But isn't that because it confirms what, what so many, even us, what we think of ourselves, like, oh, well, there, there they go again. Because when a black, when one black, black person does something, it's like a general thing. Like, oh, there they go. Oh, when a white person does yeah. something, it's that individual. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. White folks have the, 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 the privilege of being individuals. It's all collective with us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. One way I've heard that all what we just kind of see in the last few minutes is when you see a white person Let's just say a male, you see, you see a grown white person, you see a man. When you see a grown black person, you see a black man. Yeah. And that, that difference right there is the difference in and of itself. Mm-hmm. 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 But Let's it makes see. me... It, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 go ahead, Simone. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, we, as we were talking about this, it makes me wonder about the protest. Like, do... It makes me... Because I, I'm always thinking about perception. Like, the way that it's going now... Is is it something like is this um, effective, or are we feeding into the biases that white people already have about us? Like the way it's going now, mm. is this effective the way it, the way it is, or or should we do it the way that they say that we should do it so that they will feel comfortable? I'm you know what I'm saying? Like, it's starting to feel like you darned if you do, you darned if you don't. You know, like. Okay if we give up too soon and fade out like Stefan was talking about, like, you know, it's becoming less black folks and more white folks doing this. I feel like if we give up, it's like, oh, see, they quit. It wasn't that important. They stopped doing it. But then if we continue, like I've been seeing stuff and I've been falling down the Facebook rabbit hole, you know, comments and folks are like, oh, they need to go it. home. They need <laughs> to get a job. Why are they still yes. out there? What is this doing? Nothing's happening. But I, you know, I keep thinking the more that we are there, the more that we continue, there has been movement. There is some movement happening. Like we can't just give up because people don't want us to be out there. But I do feel like it's definitely, if we give up now, it's like, oh, see, it wasn't that important to them. They quit. And then if we stay out there, you still get condemned. We get, we get called lazy. Like protesting is not lazy. Mm-hmm. Not at all. Like for some, especially for some of those people who have been out since day one. I mean, if you stop by uh, before they closed Jefferson Square, for camping and people were living at Jefferson Square. They yeah. weren't leaving. It was hot. Like this was just a couple months ago. Like that's not laziness to me. That's that takes mm-hmm. something mm-hmm. to be able to do to leave the comforts of your own home to go and lay out on the street for somebody you've never met before just because it's wrong because what they what happened to them was wrong. That that's opposite of laziness. But that's how it gets perceived. But meanwhile you have these folks who went out here to the um, the governor's mansion and protested about their masks and their haircuts and you know lifted up this effigy of our governor mm-hmm. and they're seen as heroes <laughs> like that was cool patriots yeah you know it's, right. it's, 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 there's a word that's that's used a lot and the word is called narrative and people actually would see the same thing same image yet they will mm-hmm. talk about different deals i'm gonna th- throw a term out you that you all heard a couple years ago alternative facts Mm. Oh yeah, <laughs> news. but 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 it, you know we laugh because but the bottom line is again you see you you see something but yet everyone chooses to focus on different parts of that and that shows division mm-hmm, and they mm-hmm. play on that when, when 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 the bottom line is again you know it is it, it, it's it's what should we be focusing on we we can't let it go somebody mentioned mm-hmm. should we let it go we we have to speak mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. and I'm shifting a little just a second but the, um right not writing um. Um, protesting. Protesting. Thank you. Protesting. That that's been a that's been a, a, a vehicle that's been used for centuries um, for disenfranchised people. Notice mm-hmm. people who protest are rich people. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> that, that, those people are going to protest. It's pro- mm-hmm. people who are disenfranchised, um, low education, low income, and to the point when they're pushed. That he has something to do with even how slavery was abolished. It wasn't because of the, the, the niceness of people's hearts. It's just because again. It was pushed back, and you have to push. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like, you, 
when I see when I saw the like the the black the militia, I don't want nobody to get hurt. I don't want nobody to get anything. I, I want I hope for peace in all things. But when I saw that, I was like, I'm here for it. I understand. I get it because nothing is still being done about Breonna Taylor. So yep. it's like, but I know different people have different ideas. Like, oh, why are they showing up with? with you know why are they armed and blah 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 but for me as i see it i feel like that's that's necessary like i get it i don't know what y'all oh. think about that if, so hitting know. so hitting on that what what y'all feel about uh because it seems like there are a couple of key cities that are you know kind of moving this along portland oregon being one of them yeah uh, i believe atlanta was was one or is one as well I, I want to say there's a city in Texas too uh, that's that's pretty big, but Louisville is on the map when it comes to to protesting, and we've had multiple groups from uh, all different ideologies converge into Louisville. How, <laughs> how do y'all feel? How do y'all feel about outsiders outsiders coming in to protest? Does it dilute the message at all? Does it bring more attention to it? You wish it would just go away. Are they stepping over some of the local activists that are doing the, that are that are clearly doing the work? Is it is it in a, assisting local activists? What what are y'all's thoughts, especially you, Stefan? Because I know that you you've been down at a lot of protests even before NFAC has come, and I think there was another group that came in. Um, the Black Panthers were here at, at Daniel at Daniel Cameron's house. You know, I think that was an outside group as well. So you've been in even way before that. How do you feel about seeing outside folks coming through? Um, it's a double-edged sword for sure. It's good to see the national attention. It's good to, to see Breonna Taylor on CNN and like for people to recognize Louisville and to see what's going on and for that attention to be there. On the other hand, I could see how some of like the local Black Lives Matter groups and things are kind of getting overshadowed because they've been on the pavement every single day. And mm -hmm. Freedom Rings comes in one weekend and they get this big expose and they're doing so much, but then they leave on Monday. And I mean, that's it really. It's, it's nice to see the support, but I just wish that the local people were getting the national spotlight that these outside groups. Mm -hmm. like, but you know, so, that, so that's something that is, happening like the the local people are not the local activists are getting overshadowed exactly. by by the outside groups that come in that's so that's something that's for real for real happening mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm, mm -hmm. how do you feel about that cheyenne seeing um some folks who were i guess reality stars were in that group of folks that came that protested in front of daniel cameron's house does that change anything for you knowing that celebrities are getting more involved in the cause uh, do you feel like they sh are overstepping or does it help that they're here to try to um, keep the names out there well for me with outside groups it kind of depends on the intent you know like if you're just like coming to be seen kind of like stefan hinted on earlier like people were kind of doing it because it was the trend to get involved with black lives matter or to release a statement or go to a protest to take a selfie then you know maybe not but I always mm -hmm. feel like it's good if celebrities with good intent or, you know, well-known people speak up about it because it's raising awareness. You know, somebody might not be watching CNN or know about Breonna Taylor, but because Portia or Rashida or whoever is involved in it and, you know, unfortunately they got arrested, that's getting it to new audiences that might not have heard about it yet that can, you know, mm -hmm. also support the cause. And um, I feel like, again, like what Stefan already touched on, it's just important to uplift like the local voices as well because the people who live here are going to be the ones you know really spearheading the movement like even Martin Luther King like when he went to cities you know he went to the local church or he connected with SNCC like always connected to outside groups so I feel like it's also important to you know share the spotlight and not just make it about the more well-known voices right 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 yeah um and as I think about it, I just, I find it really, I have a really strong reaction. I feel really disgusted by the fact that whether it be, you know, having these groups protest for months and months and months or having these killings, um, these murders be publicized, it's uh, as terrible as it is, like we, ha we have to have it because we have to, unfortunately, we have to validate our experience in the world because when we say racism has been happening, systematic racism has been happening forever, white people, and even some of us want to say no, it hasn't. 
They don't no, believe it hasn't. Us. And so it's like we have to have this stuff on view, like for the world to see, for people, mm -hmm. white people, those in power, to actually be like, you know what? Maybe something is going on down there. Maybe some, And it's disgusting. It really makes me angry that we even have to have, that we have to put all this on view because for me, it's traumatizing to even watch it, like to watch, obviously, for all of us. Um, it's traumatizing to watch it, but we have to have it out there because if we don't, that's just more, um, that gives them license to deny, deny, deny. It, it, mm -hmm. Right. Not speaking is a form of acceptance. You, you don't have to be the Say one up front doing things, but, but when you sit back and don't say anything, what you're doing is condoning, that's, that's condoning as well, by not mm -hmm. saying anything, you're not doing anything. Right. Yeah. With Breonna Taylor, I was so shocked when I found out about it because I was like, this happened, you know, back in, I want to say it was like early March um, that it she was. was murdered. And I don't mm -hmm. think I found out about it until like April. So like that shocked me. And I feel like, you know, even in instances like Trayvon Martin, like we all see the trial happen and we all hope that, you know, they'll get the guilty verdict and we're not super surprised when they don't. But it's like for Breonna Taylor, like to not have the bare minimum of the officers being fired or charged is just like, wow, like you're not even going to like give us, you know, the halfway hope of having them be charged or anything like that's been very crazy to me. So speaking of that. <laughs> I know. I know where you're going. I know where you're going. going with that. And I'm here for it. So here for it. I remember because I know for me, um, you know, being raised and my parents may be well aware of the inequalities that we as black folks uh, were going to go through. So there was nothing new to me, but it really hit me differently, you know, when Mike Brown uh, got shot and killed. And I remember when there was nothing that went on with that and how, you know, Ferguson was just, boom, Ferguson was crazy. So. Brand, let me, let me jump in with you right there real quick. I just heard on the news the other day that they were quietly reinvestigating Mike Brown's case and deciding not to charge the officers again. Really? So, yeah. Yes. Really? Wow. Okay. So hit him in the hit him and hit him in the gut twice. All right. All right. right. All right. Uh, <laughs> so what happens here in Louisville if nothing happens with the officers? <laughs> Well, well, keep in mind, and, and, and Brandon, I'm not sure if you finished now, but keep in mind, historically speaking, everyone, every state would tell you it is amazingly hard to get a cop convicted. It yes. is. Uh, no, back up, back up. It's hard to get charges. Yeah. That alone, it's hard to get charges. And then if charges are, 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 are presented, then it's hard to get a conviction, this, 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 this speaking. So, so, so the, you, you're always right now on an uphill battle. And, and, of course, we're all like, there's evidence, there's evidence, but you know. It's, it's so simple. I know. Like, I know. Get it, but get it it's done. right here on a platter. Yeah. They're, actually, <laughs> they're actually protected by the Supreme Court ruling for some years ago that makes it hard to convict cops, police officers, that is. So they're protected. So we got to vote, get who we need in there to change that rule. That's the key. Because as long, you got to remember, police unions in major cities like Louisville, have power. Yep, right. They have power. You know, there's no, uh, we'll take the case of Minnesota for, uh, Minneapolis, for example. Uh, the cop that got, you know, indicted. He has like 12 to 15 uh, warnings in, uh, in his record yeah. for mm -hmm. excessive force and other things. Mm -hmm. So how is he still a cop? Right. You right. Know what I'm saying? If I had the job at McDonald's, <laughs> They would they would have fired me years ago. You mess up with the fire five times, you gone. There you go. <laughs> that, that's what I was about to say. Most companies, if you it's a, it's a um, credibility clause that if you lie on an official document, most companies you get fired right you get in the fired. Day. Yeah, that was proven a couple years ago uh, at Notre Dame when the coach came in and he said he had a bachelor's degree and all these other things. And he's like, you never went to that school, <laughs> and he got fired. <laughs> I asked a city official, that, is it against the law for a cop to lie on a police report? You would think that, as simple as that, that it would be against the law, but, but it is not against the law right now because it goes back to the union and, and to see how things are run by them. But that, that's something I feel, since we want to want reform and change, it should be against the law 
to lie on an official document. Yeah. yeah. So then that speaks to the to the institutional issue. And mm-hmm. so if so if that's the case and that and that's the logic which makes sense, well then our protest protest obsolete, should we all be running for state something, state senator or whatever? <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like if that, cause I, I agree with that. Like I think the protests are important at the same time. That's not where changes are made. Because we're demanding like do something about Brown and Taylor, for example, but at the same time, that's not how they set up. Amen. So mm-hmm. are the protests obsolete? Is should we be doing something else? We should be mm. running for. We should be trying to get get with Keisha, get our other guest. <laughs> should we be trying to be uh, we, state legislators or whatever? But you also have Absolutely to look right. at. Mm. You have to look at the <laughs> power structure. Not voting for you. Who's <laughs> giving the money to these police unions and you know and these other representatives? So let's let's think about this protest when we went first started in downtown. Why weren't the police protecting property? Why why do they care about this park? The park had been lived there by those people. Occupy Wall Street was there for almost two years mm. before they threw them out. When I work downtown, every day there are tents everywhere. But mm-hmm. you know, rather it's not protect the, the businesses down there because we have to look at it also like this. We have to look at this little conspiracy theory, you want to say. <laughs> Fourth Street's pretty much gone. Those businesses are gone. Mm-hmm. So somebody has to buy those businesses. Mm. The city has to make money. Somehow. Okay. Okay. The property value in the West and the Newburgh going down. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now they say you can buy a house nowadays at dirt cheap. You can buy three, four hundred thousand dollar home, dirt cheap. Okay. That's how easy it is to buy a house now. I just seen a commercial today on TV where they said you can buy a brand new Ford truck. You ain't got to pay us for six months. And in fact, well, in year, you. <laughs> if you lose your job, Bring the truck back. <laughs> wow. But we have to look at it. Something's going on in Louisville also, as far as their power structure. Something's really going on. They're changing it again. So just like in New York, uh, back in the 40s and 50s, when my parents first got up to New York, black people owned brownstone houses. There was no projects. The projects mm-hmm. didn't even exist. What the gentrification of the latter latter share of brown did, they start raising the taxes on the on the black folks there for these brownstones, and so they had no other choice but to move into the projects. And now those brownstones, like Jay Z said, I should have bought one for ten thousand dollars. Now they're mm-hmm. worth four and five million dollars. Million dollars, mm-hmm. yes. And it's funny how, and let's let's say in the next ten years. The West End is wiped out. Hmm. Let's just say it's going to get wiped out, okay? And then the houses that were thirty thousand dollars, ah, they're worth a hundred grand now, two hundred thousand. They're real nice. Police in the street. It's like Spike Lee said, "Where were the cops in his Brooklyn?" And I'm from New York. Where were the cops? Because hmm. once again. The power of the money comes in, and that's what's happening here in Louisville. So let me, there's let me, no let me, way, there's no way this, these three cops should be walking the street collecting a check. No. Right. Let me pose a question to the uh, to the old heads. <laughs> wow, there's two of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you. I'm I'm looking looking at you. I cut my eyes at you. I'm looking at the folks with the gray hair. Uh, <laughs> so, Simone? Oh, shoot. What? Uh, <laughs> see, <laughs> you gotta, you see, I don't have up. any grades. <laughs> so oh, yeah, Brandon got some too. You Brandon know, got grades. It's not about me. Y'all, um, <laughs> y'all grew up, if not very far removed from the civil rights era, correct? 66. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was born and raised in 66. Yeah, I was born. Yeah, so by the time you knew anything, it was a little bit past, a little bit past that. But you were still feeling some remnants of it. Yeah. Is is anything kind of the same? Do you feel like this is just history repeating itself? Like, 
is it just a pattern, like a cycle? Like we get mad for a little bit, we we protest, we do this, that, and the other, you get a couple of couple of laws passed, you get a couple black folks in a couple high places, and then it goes back to normal. Do you see anything different? Yeah, you know, um, uh, I didn't realize a major difference in race until I got to high school. Mm-hmm. Because I went, I went to, um, again, my neighborhood was predominantly it was middle class, uh, lower middle class area in Chicago, South Side. Um, went to a Catholic school. The teachers were, initially teachers were white. They had priests. And then later on, by the time I got to eighth grade, you know, the principal was black and most people were black. Um, but I didn't realize that until I got to high school where I actually, it was integrated high school. Um, and I started having white friends and associates. So, so that was the time to change for me. So, so in the seventies, you know, kind of growing up and all the TV and the, uh, the plier situation, and all that kind of stuff. I didn't really see anything major happening again until high school. That's when I started noticing that there's a difference. Um, and then in college, then it was, it was just full blown by then, but racism didn't exist for me because I really wasn't in diverse areas until I got to high school. Mm. Uh, I was born in a city in New York. Um, Everybody's heard of the famous Rucker Ballpark. Mm-hmm. My elementary school was right across the street from my house. I went there for kindergarten and first grade. Then I got bused to the village. All the way downtown, I got bused to a white school. And it was culture shock at first. Uh, then when my sister moved to uh, the suburbs in Long Island, that's where there was a lot of integration. But we still had it where you had the black side of the tracks and the white side of the tracks, mm-hmm. you know, and everything. But the kids all came together. And I always tell my kids the story. The first time anybody ever called me the N-word, I was with a group of white people. And we were going to the store. And it was another white man who called, called me that name. And what was crazy, my white friends wanted to fight this guy. because. They did not like what they called me, what he called me. Um, Another thing is also my parents told me in the 40s and the 50s, African-Americans in New York, self-sufficient. They didn't need anybody. And then after the shooting of King and Malcolm, uh, how they say people start going in their own way. Uh, Mm -hmm. Or as they say, black people didn't start getting money until like the 80s and everything and that's what kind of separated everybody you know and um and my father said it comes in cycles he says it comes in cycles but you know you got to keep believing in something yeah mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i'm gonna chime in real quick right. i'm not an old head but i talked about no, yeah, it all uh, we want y'all to answer too yeah you're getting, you're getting close you getting close i do talk to a couple old heads so i kind of get their perspective sometimes uh, me and my dad, for example, were talking about this very thing. You were saying kind of how things happen in the 60s and there's a repeating, people protest, and then things go back to normal. Um, they were saying kind of like with Rodney King, for example, like they were saying today, this is the most united we've seen like America as far as mm-hmm. crying out against injustice, as far as just like kind of drawing a line in the sand, saying we've had enough. Um, and part of that reason is what my dad called like the browning of America. He was saying like, oh, yeah. getting all these yeah. older, older whites that are racist, they're kind of fading out. So the, the Donald Trumps, the Joe Bidens, they're getting up 70s, 80s, they're, they're kind of fading out. And the younger whites are mixing and mingling with black people. They got mixed grandkids, they have black mm-hmm. spouses. So they, they feel our pain in a different way than they used to. And that's why things are continuing to resonate. That's why the whites are showing up at the protests and all of these back laws and things are getting changed mm-hmm. and racist structures are getting wiped out because the people in power or the people coming into power now have like a deeper connection with black people. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if this, this cycle of it will be different than how it was in the 60s, but so far it, it's seemingly mm-hmm. it will be. Well, well that, that, that makes sense. That definitely makes yeah. sense. You have interracial marriage, you have interracial mm-hmm. kids. Well, so sure, yeah. oh, I, could definitely, mm-hmm. I could definitely see that. You have mm-hmm. people who are yeah. going to work. You know, I have... You know, I'm very fortunate. I'm blessed to have a couple of clients, uh, in, you know, with where I work who, you know, who speak against these types of things. And it's because they have, 
they number one, they're they're good people to begin with. And because they also have, you know, friends and family members who, you know, who they so they interact more with black folks versus back in the day, uh, they may not have. So no, that's that's a good point. That's a good mm-hmm. point. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, most it's definitely. A, it's a it's a really good point. And I think for me, as I think about like why how in the world Trump got elected in the first place, it made me think about like, okay, yes, America is we're it's getting more and more brown. Why so why not elect somebody who's gonna try to keep, you know, the Mexicans out and try to keep, you know, not want brown people in this country and try to keep, hold us down. Um and while uh, I was I'm very surprised to see like some of these um white supremacist groups, like how how many young people there are. Like there are some really young people because when I think about like an old you know, like a racist, racist folks. I think about old white people in the mountains. <laughs> and it's them, but it's also some young people. If you look on the comment threads of some of these videos and you research some of these people, it's young people, some of them. And it's really disturbing. It's like, how did you, how did you get there? This reminds me of, um, I want to say, was it, was it you, Cheyenne, when you were at Mail? in high school and we get engaged in like a Twitter argument with some students who were saying like, it's slavery, get over it. And they were like 18. <laughs> it, was either, it was either you or it was my sister. Well, I remember in high school, well, I did, you know, get into some Twitter war sometimes, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> mainly in the presidential election. But like one time, I remember it was right after the Trayvon Martin uh, verdict came down, which I spoke about earlier. But um, it was myself and some other black students in high school that I follow. We were all saying that we weren't going to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance the next day in honor of him. And I got called ignorant and this, that, and the third. Like, what's the anthem have to do with this? And I was like, why am I going to stand for a flag that's not honoring me, you know? Mm -hmm. And, you know, they said I was disrespecting the troops. And I was like, I have veterans in my family. Like, try again. So, I don't listen to that junk. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the go-to. Right, they're the only people that have family members with that are troops. Right, <laughs> right. Like they're fine. They don't really care. I tell you this: I got in an argument with another black male uh, uh, on the internet about standing for the national anthem. I'm a veteran of twelve years. I have not since I got out of the army in two thousand. I have not stood for the national anthem because. Really? What makes your patriotism better than mine? My back. All my kids have graduated from uh, high school and I've gone to their graduation. I've sat down. I don't care because you can't say you're better than me. How? You can't say that. That flag, it means something to people. Yes, it does. But that, that flag does not make you a better American than me. Only thing is that I was born in this country. I could have been born in Africa. I could have been born in Russia. Come on, y'all. This is the only country that we go for this this nonsense, you know. And that and, that, and that's basically what it is. It's nonsense. That, that goes back to control the narrative because again, yes, you, yes, you let somebody that's true. tell you this is not patriotic or you dishonoring the flag and the, and the troops. No, As a matter of fact, I I wish my two cents. When this was going on, when Kaepernick first started doing this, I wish the um, NFL Player Association would actually start putting out PSAs. I wish every every Sunday when games are on, put out a PSA to say this is why we're doing this. Let, mm-hmm. let, let, because because again, you let the other the others control the narrative. Say they talk about this honor Correct. the truth. They put mm-hmm. out there more and more because right now you're hearing it took four years to hear that it's not about the troops, it's not about the flag, it's not about any of that because it's, it's it's the platform that we're given. Mm-hmm. If, you, if y'all ask us about, uh, after the game, we tell you something about that, you're not going to ask us anymore. You're going to talk to somebody else to, to say some, some other stuff. But check but this again. out, Rodney. Up until 1990, they didn't, players never stood for the National Anthem until the government started paying the NFL money. It's all about the dollar bill. Nobody That's what happened. Mm-hmm. They needed the drama nobody, to nobody cared. It's about yeah. the dollar bill. And if also if people listen to Kaepernick, he had a gentleman on his team who was a special forces soldier. Nate Hoyer. 
Nate mm-hmm. Boyer, and he told him. I don't know if he was on the team or not, but he, uh, I think he was a, he's a Navy SEAL, I believe. Yeah, he right? was a Navy SEAL, and he told him, Neil, I have a shirt that says, I'm a veteran. And at the bottom it says, I serve so you can kneel. Mm-hmm. Hold on, and guys. Want, and, and that's what it's about, man. Your patriotism is not better than mine. Okay. So we were talking about following the money on these on this issue of the NFL and, and the flag. And I thought it was funny that, you know, when Rob said that, um, there's a lot of money made off turning flags into shirts, the cups, the plates. And ironically, if you look at the flag code, um, that's that. actually more disrespectful. You're not supposed to do that. Yes, it is. Right. Yes, it is. <laughs> then it is to kneel for it. But somebody yeah. with a flag shirt will tell you you're being disrespectful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, so, but let's... when we think about the, hold on, just a second. When we think about the narrative, though, I, and I agree with what you're saying, Rodney. I think no matter what we keep, because we've been saying it's not about patriots. It's not about that. We've been saying that, and I think that's just white America's way of just not looking at themselves and looking at the truth. And so I feel like we, we keep saying this over and over again. And I feel like it is a narrative issue, but also it's just denial. Like it's erasure. Mm -hmm. And it's like, and I'm glad that finally now folks are starting to talk about it, but I don't think it's that they didn't get it. I think it's that they just like, Oh, we've been disregarding them for centuries. Let's just continue to do that. Let's keep on. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't affect you, I don't care about it. Right. If it's not in my face, I don't worry about it. Yeah, right. That privilege. I don't. I don't care. This, this is a true story. My next door neighbor, not not down the street. My next door neighbor. We had a conversation briefly, um, and he said this was maybe a year or so ago. And he said, "Well, you know, if you get invited to the president's house, I mean, to the president, you know, after a team wins the championship, they go. If you get invited, invited, he said you should take the opportunity. And I didn't say anything because I didn't want to." Uh, blow his head away. But <laughs> what I wanted to say, because again, what I wanted to say was this, and I, and given the opportunity, I would say it again, because again, certain certain battles you don't you don't, but but they can choose. If yeah. I had the opportunity again, I would say this to him: If the president of the United States says something very derogatory to your daughter and or your wife, and then he gave you an invite to his house, would you still go? And I know the answer will be no. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and what he was really saying when he said that it's an honor and they should go, what he was saying was, what's been going on, what he's been saying didn't impact me. Mm-hmm. So therefore, I would go. Mm-hmm. So that's why if I gave him another chance, another way to see that, if he directly uh, offended your wife and or your daughter, and then you got to invite to go see, see him, would you go? And of course, the answer would be no. And Do that's you the think point. of course, though? Because I think of when, you know, our our astute president said what he would like to do with women when he came across them. And I saw women going, yeah, that's just how the guys talk. You know, that's fine. I'm going to still vote for him. No, you know, that's I don't, to I don't me, like that. that was because they ain't never been around a real man. <laughs> that's that, up, bro. That's that, but that's that internalized sexism. Oh, that's yeah. how men talk. You know, that's fine. That's what they do. That's unacceptable. And my question for the friend that you were just talking about, Rodney, is if you care about me, though, and you care about my life, would you, like, if you think about, like, how this could impact my wife and my family, do you think you should go? But, but yeah. this, that's the disconnect. Because yeah. he should right. have that on his own. Yeah. He should have, but he never why, had to. Why, why are the players not going? Well, you know what? I understand why they're not going, and it's cool. If people want to go. That would have been a more uh, around the statement to say. Some people want to go, some people not. But but to, to say that if you get invited, it's an honor to go and you should go, that means you don't understand why people are not going. You're not making the connection. Yeah. You can see the disconnect yeah. even with the, the slogan. Like, the slogan is so simple. Black lives matter. That's it. <laughs> That's <laughs> it. Like, you know, the most important it thing. Your life doesn't matter. Nothing like that. And people are literally saying, but, or all lives matter. Like, why, why is that even? That's so such a privileged mindset like your life yeah. doesn't matter right now like how can you even say that to a group of people it's unbelievable yeah mm-hmm. it's like you don't understand that your lives have always mattered without right. always like this matter. Your always like, matter. This matter the baseline always. This matter that's it we, yeah we that's it so <laughs> oh lord <laughs> brandon's about to change to change brandon goes every week he just like this every week he just, so, <laughs> he just like, the whole, what's in that cup yeah, you got a I cup was, 
I was just waiting for Black Lives Water. Matter. Don't worry about what's in my cup. Don't worry about that. Um, <laughs> speaking of Black Lives Matter, what about? Because you know, you get the whole thing about not all your not all your your skin folk is your kin folk. True. What What about the black folks that are against this? And you know, you got your your Ben Carsons, your your Candace Owens, your other random folks who's who, who are against saying now, Black Lives Matter. You're now COVIDly deceased, Herman Cain. Looking. Oh man, I wasn't gonna bring him God, up. Yes. God yes. rest. It. God rest his soul. Rest his weary soul. <laughs> but when you follow a cult leader, that's what happens to you, unfortunately. Mm hmm. What? Oh. I don't know, man. It just shows the depths of like Jim Crow. Like self hate is so real, and people shuck and mm-hmm. jive the approval of the white man to yeah. no end. It's unbelievable how you can go against your own race like that. And ben Carson, in particular, like he makes no sense to me. Like the way we grew up idolizing this man. <laughs> Yes. Like, <laughs> the power and the think, the think big. I read that book. Wow. For, for those of you, for those of you that don't know, uh, all of us that are on this panel right now. Oh, actually, let me correct me if I'm wrong. All of us on this panel are Seventh Day Adventists, mm-hmm. and or, you know, and Ben Carson's is Seventh Day Adventists. Uh, for me, I we grew up, or I grew up idolizing Ben Carson. Uh, one I of read, our black heroes. Uh, he's one of our black heroes. Him along with Barry Black and, and Whitley Phipps. Uh, but mm-hmm. Ben Carson was really high up there. You know, we know about him separating the twins, and every, all of us read his story and something all the Lord us, made all that. Yeah, all of us, yeah. and we know we we remember. You know, one thing that sticks out to me was that his mom couldn't read, and that you know he she made him do book reports and. She would just look at them, but she couldn't understand them. But she would just, she would just kind of fake grade them, this that, and the other, and make him do more and more and more. So someone who grew up poor, grew up with nothing, is the person that is so against a lot of these things. I, it's it's it blows my mind right now. And really, and he, they have. Life. And he has allowed them to tokenize him. This is a surgeon, and you are running HUD. What do you know about HUD? <laughs> Money. How do you know about HUD? Money. <laughs> that check is good. That money must be I hope, good. I hope, I hope it's check worth is good. it. That check I is hope good. it's worth it. I, it is still baffling to me, man. I... I don't even at this stage of the game, like my parents, I think they made me read his book. Yeah. Uh, yeah. growing up. Like he was a, it was like mandatory reading. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm at a point now I don't even know if I'm gonna tell my kids about him. So, you know <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know what? His accomplishments I don't know this man. are worthwhile. His accomplishments are worthwhile. But prior to being a surgeon, because he he's not the uh he's not that anymore. He's not doing that anymore. But 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 his his accomplishments are absolutely Worth giving praise to because that gives out to point to God what God did through him. Yeah. After That's surgery, you <laughs> right. We have to, to we have to want to throw him. all of him away. I just Good surgeon, horrible politician. Away. We have to refer to him as Ben Carson pre-Trump and Ben Carson post-Trump. <laughs> Different <Yes>. person. <laughs> oh, but it really is. It really is crazy how black folks that should have some skin in the game and should be kind of rallying behind that are detracted. And it's just so funny to me that white folks listen to those voices the most, I guess, because it kind of validates what they think. I, I guess, I don't know. Familiarity, you know, they, yeah. you know, not having the other associates, I mean, kind of the bottom line. That, that's why so many, that's why I'm saying I'm really happy that white people are kind of getting involved and you would hear them say stuff like, I didn't know. How could you not know? Well, you know what the truth of the matter is, they may not have known, and it could be by choice. Uh, some ignorance sometimes is by because you don't have it. Some people because you chose not to have it. Mm-hmm. It's by choice. Ask about it. You know, and, and the fact I, I'll even say this, and I'm not gonna spend time dumping on the president because it's too easy. But <laughs> notice this past John Lewis's funeral. Who was there? Who was invited? Mm-hmm. And, and and I wish somebody would ask him, do you know any black civil rights leaders? Any. Because again, the whole weekend, the whole deal, um, he has zero presence. That says a lot. It says that a lot. says a lot. He knows a lot about Frederick Douglass. He's always talking about him. 
<laughs> like he's well, I do alive. believe, in fact, yep. <laughs> I do believe, in fact, uh, when the National uh, African American Museum was open, that John Lewis took him. Hmm. He grabbed him and took him there to show it to him because they, you know, they closed it up and John Lewis took him. You know, how do you say this old saying, you can't change an old, an old dog's new tricks. And he's an old dog. He's not going to change. And unfortunately, in the next 20 years, like they say, in 2040, uh, they're going to be gone. And yeah. these new children will not see color anymore. We won't say, hey, that white dude, hey, that Spanish dude. We're going to say that man over there. And that's what we have to get our children and grandchildren to. Yeah. Well, I think in the meantime, even though we know that he, that, you know, people like him hopefully will, you know, go on in their own way, in their own time. I think we can't make it easy on them. We have to continue to use our voices in whatever way that we, that we can. Um, so I think it's all important what we're doing. This platform on the, on the pavement, on social media, um, we can't make it easy for these folks. We have to keep using our voices. Yeah, don't be scared. Just let them have it. Yeah, yeah. One thing about our voice too, and, and actually, actually a lot of people are disenfranchised with voting. But the fact of the matter is, if you, if you can't get thousands and thousands of people in, in, in an arena or in front of a building, if you can't, if you can't do that, the next best thing is voting. And, and, and as, as antiquated and as um, slow as that process is, again, that, that is the most effective way, unfortunately, but it's the truth, of actually speaking these days. Now you do see again, and now if you if you know how to get tens of a thousand of people in front of a building, yeah, you can get changed. But but see, try try that. You see how yeah. hard it was for, 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 for what's going on now. That is hard. So mm -hmm. so what we the next thing we have is voting, mm -hmm. which is why we have to do our best, especially young people. You know, I, I hope this doesn't apply to Stefan. A lot of people like him, my, my high school students who are young, they say, well, you know, it done, my vote doesn't count and all this kind of stuff. We have to let them know that, you know what, all these things may be true, but what we mm -hmm. have in place, if you do nothing, that same joke you're complaining about is going to be reelected for four more years or six more years. So mm -hmm. now, now what do you have to say? Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. To me, it's super disrespectful. Even if you don't believe that your vote counts, like all the people who fought and died for you to even have that yes. right. Yes. Not, yes. Mm -hmm. so disrespectful. It's just, it's yes. like literally died yes. so you can vote. Literally. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. that's, my yeah. first, that's my first argument. Too many people died yeah. so I can have this right. So how do Correct. I not? Exactly. Exactly. I think we got to do multiple things, you know, um, voting, protest, all of those things. Um, so you all, I know that the hour is getting late, and so I think that we probably should shift. Um, so we always talk about self-care. Are folks ready to shift to that, about how we're going to kind of take care of ourselves as all of this unrest continues going on? Are y'all cool with that? Yeah. And while y'all thinking about something to say, I just want to say thank you all again for being on. Um, again, we said before you all came in, it's usually just the three of us talking. And people get to hear our thoughts and opinions, but it's nice to hear from other folks what they're thinking and how they're feeling across different age groups. So thank y'all for your time this evening. We really appreciate it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah. Rodney, Rodney, do you have any, I'm just putting you on the spot. Do you have any, I don't know, self-care goals or things that you want to do to kind of uplift yourself as we endure all that we're enduring right now? Absolutely. For, for, for a few years now, I've been on the um, soapbox of, the importance of Christians and Christians of staying in the word because it is so easy with all this stuff happening. And, and these, are, these aren't just hurricane, you know, uh, that kind of stuff. We, we're talking about once in a lifetime situations. We've never had, lived through a pandemic in our lifetime. I mean, we, we, Rob and I are old heads per se. We've not had a pandemic in this lifetime. We, we've not had too many major world marches like we've had in our lifetime. So on top of all the other things, so many things going on, I, I encourage all of, all Christians, people who call themselves Christians, don't just focus on the stuff. Look at the stuff through the, 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 the lens of the Bible 
And not only will it give you understanding and, and true and better perspective, it's going to give you hope. Mm -hmm. because, because people who, I used to be Catholic, I'm not Catholic anymore. Catholic talk, talked about um, how the world is getting better. And other religions talk about how the world is getting better. Based on what the Bible says, the world is getting worse. Worse. And, and but 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 that's why I don't let this discourage you. Be encouraged because if the Bible said these things are going to happen, we can trust what the Bible says, and we know ultimately what's going to end of the story will be. Mm -hmm. So, so I encourage all people who have the faith in, in God to first believe that He's coming because he, he that shall come will come. He cannot lie. And and as you get through your day every day, make time for Him, make time for the Word because I promise you, if you look at things through spiritual eyesight. It would give you such clarity and understanding and peace, and then it would help us get through. The, it help you get through the day. I, I I encourage people to do that. Yeah, a good word. Uh, Stefan, you got any self care uh, goals? Yeah, Rodney uh, kind of went more spiritual with it. I'll go more practical. Um, just getting through the day. I've been trying to make time to be out in nature more. So going on walks and being in parks and things, getting sunlight on my skin. Um, fresh mm -hmm. air, making sure I get water, things like that. Being locked in the house, it, it'll take its effects on you after a while. You got to make sure to, to reconnect with nature and, and being mm -hmm. outside. Being, um, mm -hmm. So I would definitely say that. Get outside as much as you can. Get some fresh light. Let those eyes see the sun. For sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Robert? Robbie, you got anything? Would you call me? Robert. <laughs> oh, Simone, <laughs> Simone called me another name. No, she um, said Rob. Rob. I said oh, I'm Rob. Sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, Roberto. <laughs> yeah. Um, the spiritual part, that, that's a given. You, you have to spend time. Uh, you got to meditate. You got to spend time with the Lord. Um, if everybody knows me, I'm up at five o'clock in the morning. If I go to bed at three, I'm up at five. Um, I do. I have a, a simple thing. I ice my knees. And while I'm icing my knees, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I got ice them knees. Uh, while I'm icing my knees, I read my Bible. Uh, oh. you know, I, 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 I've noticed I pray more now. Um, and that's no more thing. The second thing is we have to take care of our health. Uh, due to my medical issue I had last year, uh, it brung on a couple of things. So uh, my health is number one. My wife's health is also number one right along with that. But there's something that kills black men more than anything else stress we mm -hmm. have to take that stress throw it out uh, i tell my daughters and i told them this starting starting last year when i came home from the hospital i said if you got drama leave it at the mailbox write me a letter because <laughs> if you come up in this house you're gonna go right back out the door and just spending more time with me and my wife to spend more time together um but you got to stay stress free. I think if we stay st stress free, oh. take care of our health, talk to the Lord every day, and you know, don't be doing those, you know, Lord up above, Father God, da 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 da. Really, you know, really sit down. You know, as old folks say, get in that closet and have that real relationship and say, you know, I, I'm more emotional now than I ever been before. And, you know, my wife will say, you over there crying. I'm like, yeah, I'm crying. You know, and you just, <laughs> hey, so you're laughing. But, <laughs> you know, you have to, you know, you got you to gotta remember, guys, I died for two minutes last year. When they stuck mm. me in that tube, I was gone for two minutes. Mm. You know, mm. when I came out that tube, you know, they was like ready to charge me back up. But my eyes open for a reason. So I got recharged. So I got to use that every day. I got to use every day. I'm, I'm like a, I'm, I'm, I'm more than a Muslim. I'm praying seven, eight, nine, eight, nine times, tens a day. And you got to read and stay away from that TV because that news is going to kill you. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. That's a good right. point. That's a good point. Right. Brandon, what you going to uh, do? Continue my theme of going to bed at a decent hour. Uh, it's been really, I've been, I've been doing that really for the month of July and just making an appointment. It was nothing for me to be up till two o'clock in the morning on the weekends, midnight, one o'clock during the week, and then just getting up, whatever, but really going to bed, you know, 10, 10, 30, 11, and 
and reaping the rewards of that. You know, I'm not snacking at night like I, I'm not snacking at night as much. Uh, <laughs> 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 so, you know, if you can't, you can't snack if you're in bed. So, you know, going to bed at this now has definitely been a, a big thing for me. So I'm going to continue with that theme. I'm just getting my rest. I know I've been just tired. You know, I picked up uh, both of my, well, you know, I got three, basically three jobs now. So, you know, you know, it's just, it's just hard to, uh, <laughs> trying to, trying to get that rest in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Y'all said so many good things. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to just take a little bit of all y'all's, but my personal one for this week is going to be to, um, stay out of the comment rabbit hole. The Facebook comment please, rabbit. I've been, please, I've been please, in please stay out the comments. Stay been out the rabbit hole. Who, I, you know, I say a lot. I'm an advocate for conversation. I always believe that I can at least impact somebody by, you know, maybe enlightening them or something they didn't know. But it's becoming real, real difficult these days. It's hectic in those comments. Oh my gosh. I had a, I mean, I had a discussion yesterday with somebody who just adamant about not making Brianna Taylor a martyr because she was on the cover of Oprah magazine. And I was like, not martyr, but example, you know, as black people, we don't have a lot of people to champion our causes for us. And that's how sometimes we get lost. You know, we don't have enough people wanting justice for Mike Brown anymore or for Colin Trayvon Martin's name anymore. If we don't keep saying Breonna Taylor, people are going to forget about Breonna Taylor. And because her family doesn't have those types of resources to keep pushing it, you know, she'll, she'll just become another unsolved mystery. You know, we don't want that to happen. But I was trying to say that in a nice way and it didn't go so well so i'm just gonna stop i'm gonna just stay out of it <laughs> <laughs> because people don't want to know they want to think what they think and and they're harsh they're different oh they're, they're harsh mm -hmm. and, but it just makes me sad though more than mm -hmm. anything because i'm reading mm -hmm. some of the stuff i'm just like some of y'all why we are protesting you know some of y'all are why we don't <laughs> we don't want to go mm -hmm. outside mm -hmm. you know some of y'all are why mm -hmm. we're saying mm -hmm. black lives matter it's just it's just sad how ugly people can be um, in yeah. this time. So I'm gonna try to America. stay out of those. Try to stay out of those rabbit holes. <laughs> please, mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. yeah, yes, please do. Um, I think for me, as I think you are, all of you know, we're you know in Louisville right now. We're gonna be heading back in a couple days, and so I think uh, so my new job starts, you know, in about a week or so. Hey. And so I'm gonna really try to, yes, it's a good thing. I'm gonna try to focus on. Um, just again, spending time with family. I know we've had time off for a couple of weeks, but you just can't get enough of that. As much as I want to strangle my family sometimes, I'm going <laughs> to miss it when I'm inundated with work. And so uh, I'm going to take the time to just soak all that love up um, with them, try to pray more, journal more. I think that was a goal for me a while ago and I got away from it, but I really, it really helped me to put, to put my prayers in writing. Um, and so I think that's what I'm going to try to start doing when I get back home to North Carolina. So thank you all for sharing your, your self-care goals. And I hope that all of you do what you said, you, what, what you said you're going to do, because we really need it during this time. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We have no way to check in with y'all. So be accountable. Usually we come back next week and we talk about it, but we're going to trust y'all to be accountable. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'll be y'all. Yeah. <laughs> Well, cool. We want to thank y'all so much. We, we've held a little longer than we usually do. So whoever's watching this, we thank y'all for staying with us and hanging with us. We hope it was a good discussion. But until next time, we want y'all to remember to wash your hands, to stay We're safe. Wear your mask. Wear your mask. You know, if you're going to protest, be socially distant, be safe, protect yourselves and each other. And until next time, you know, we remain yours. We remain, remain yours. We remain yours. <laughs>